Hello, and welcome to the first video on sequences in Calculus 2. So we're just going to introduce sequences today, and we're going to answer the questions, what is a sequence, and how do we graph sequences? So let's start by actually figuring out what a sequence is. So a sequence is a series of numbers, or it's a list, because we, we don't want to say series, uh, because we're going to actually have a specific term for that later. So a sequence is a list of numbers in a specific order. And we might think of it as a function from the set 1, 2, 3, and so on into the real numbers. And a sequence may or may not be infinite. So it may be finite or infinite. But since this is calculus, we're going to be focusing on the infinite. So another way of thinking of a sequence is to think of it like a list. Um, so we said it's a list of numbers in a specific order, so a way of thinking it is a list. Where we have a 1, a 2, a 3, and so on. Then we get maybe to a n, a n plus 1, and then we continue on to infinity. Where a 1 is our first term, a 2 our second term, a 3 our third term, and so on. And our generic element of this set we call it the nth term, and we call this the n plus first term, and the one before it, maybe that's a n minus one, we would call it the n minus first term. Okay. And it's important to note here that a n plus one is not a n plus one. So be very careful with your plus one and make sure it is a subscript when you actually write it. So let's look at an example now. Okay, if we want to write down the first few terms of a sequence, so let's say we want to write the first four terms of the sequence. And our sequence is going to be n plus 1 over n cubed. What we're going to do, uh, as n ranges from 1 to infinity, is we're going to just take our sequence here, and we're just going to plug in n equals 1, and that's our first term, and then n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. And those are our first four terms. And then we're going to say that it keeps going. So we're going to put in some ellipses. So when n equals 1, we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, over 1 cubed, which is 1. And then for n equals 2, we have 2 plus 1 over 2 cubed, 3 plus 1 over 3 cubed, 4 plus 1 over 4 cubed and so on. And now say we had another sequence for another example to clarify certain things that you might see. If we had negative 1 to the n over 3 to the n as n ranges from 1 to infinity, this is going to be uh, negative 1 to the first, so negative 1 over 3 to the first and then negative 1 squared is positive 1 over 3 squared. Negative 1 cubed, so we alternate between negative 1 and positive 1 in our numerator. And this is how we'll denote this oscillation between negative and positive. We're just going to put negative 1 either to the n or to the n plus 1, depending on if the first term is positive or negative. And then in the denominator, it's just powers of 3. So 3, 9, 
27, 81, and we just keep going on forever. For our final example, let's take a look at a n as n ranges from 1 to infinity, where a sub i, or the ith one in this list, is the ith digit of e. So we're just listing the first four terms. So e is 2.718. And it just keeps going on. So now let's take a look at graphing sequences. So as mentioned before, we can think of it as a function from the natural numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, and so on, into the real numbers. And what we're going to do is, instead of having an x and an i axis, we're going to have our n axis and our a n axis. And for each 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, we just are going to plot on the y axis, as we are normally used to calling it, the value of the sequence. So let's take a look at an example. So if we had uh, the problem where we wanted to graph n plus 1 over n squared as n ranges from 1 to infinity, well, let's just plot some terms, or let's just plug in values of n and see what we get out. So on the top, we're going to have, let's say, maybe four terms, and then we'll just keep going. So on the top, it's going to start at 2 and then increase by 1. And then on the bottom, we're just going to take the squares. So 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 4 squared, and so on. So now let's plot this. So when n is 1, a sub n is 2. So 1, 2. So maybe here. And then when n is 2, x is 3 fourths. And then it's 4 ninths at 3, which is a little bit less than a half. 5 sixteenths. And then if we wanted to look at the next one, it would be 6 over 25. So it would get closer and closer to 0. And we will pick that up next time when we talk about the limits of sequences. So to recap, in this video, we've talked about what a sequence is and how to graph sequences. Join me next time when we talk about the limits of sequences and some of their properties. And as always, thank you for watching.